If someone offers me a drink, I always accept. One, because I'm most likely thirsty. Two, because I'm polite. And three, there's a 0% chance I'm being roofied. That's one good thing about being middle-aged and overweight. No one wants to roofie you. But some people, like Patrick Moore, are much more wary when it comes to accepting drinks, especially when it's a glass of glyphosate. Watch. You can drink a whole quart of it and it won't hurt you. It's, yeah, uh, it, you want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to, actually. But you, not, not really, but... Not really? I know it wouldn't hurt I mean, me. If, if, if you say so, I have some glyphosate. No, no, I'm not stupid. What a gotcha moment, though. Or is it? It's time to get antisocial. I respect Patrick Moore, who is, by the way, not a Man Monsanto lobbyist as reported. He's a founding member of Greenpeace, who has since come to his senses. Of course, Patrick Moore doesn't want to drink the glyphosate on camera because a big old glass of glyphosate is more than what a normal person would ingest in over 500 years. And by the way, I'm not basing that off some crazy estimate. I'm basing it off of the EPA's worst case scenario of how much you ingest. If instead we base it off of one actual effort to estimate the amount of herbicide ingested by the average person, it could be as much as 230,000 years of glyphosate. Newsflash, at those extreme levels, everything is toxic, including water. If you drank 500 years of water in one sitting, I promise you, you will be dead. In addition, if there's anything I've learned during my time as a hot 21-year-old female model at a bar, it's that you don't take drinks from strangers. In this particular case, the incentive for the person giving you the drink is not to hook up with you. It's to make you sick or kill you. So of course you don't accept the drink. But glyphosate, in the amount we as humans actually ingest, is safe. How safe is glyphosate? Think about it this way. The amount of glyphosate that is safe to ingest every day for the rest of your life is over a thousand times more than the allowable level of vitamin D. And still, the fear of glyphosate persists. Why are people so afraid of glyphosate to begin with? It's the active ingredient in the world's most popular herbicide. Mm -mm -mm. You got it, Roundup, which will apparently cause half of all children to be autistic by 2025. According to a now thoroughly destroyed paper by MIT staff member and anti-genetically modified food advocate Stephanie Seneff. Let me be clear, there is no real science actually done in this paper. Seneff's main argument was literally this chart. Glyphosate use has increased, therefore it must be causing autism. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course that's obviously the case because autism is increasing and glyphosate use is increasing. It must be correlated. To show just how bad the correlation argument is, anything that is increasing since the late 90s can be shown to cause autism, including organic food. I mean, look at the correlation. It's almost perfect. Look, you can eat however you choose, and every product is toxic at some level. So how toxic is glyphosate compared to the things you may come in contact with every day? We can measure a product's toxicity by its lethal dose 50 measurement. The LD50 is the amount of chemical in milligrams per body weight that it took to kill 50% of a population of test animals. The lower the LD50 number, the less it takes to kill you. So low is bad, high is good. For example, we know nicotine is pretty bad. It has an LD50 of nine. Caffeine is 192. The same as bleach, also 192. Tylenol is 338. Household ammonia, 350. Codeine is 427. And table salt, obviously pretty innocuous, is 3000. So where does glyphosate fall in this particular scale? It has an LD50 of 4900. Considerably less toxic than table salt. Not so scary, is it? Which is why I feel that it is my duty to step in for Patrick Moore and accept the Frenchy French reporter's offer. I have asked this bartender, who's awkwardly sitting here, get up, <clears throat> to whip me up a custom drink. I'm calling it the Stuicide. Mm -hmm. In it is approximately five months of glyphosate. And just to make it fun, I've also added a bunch of fracking fluid. Mm -hmm. Because that's another 
thing that protesters keep asking fracking ag- advocates to drink. Now, this particular drink will have sand in it because fracking fluid's about 6% sand, and I'm not excited about drinking sand, and I do think it's going to be a little crunchy. Uh, but it's also 93% water and less than 1% of chemicals, some of them similar to what you find in glass cleaner. We've recreated it here. And of course, we've also got the glyphosate and put it together with a trendy salt rim and a wonderful lemon. Nice job. As we've learned, by the way, the salt around the rim is more toxic than glyphosate. This is going to taste terribly, and I do realize that, even though I'm sure you did a great job mixing it. You know why? It's not a freaking beverage. It's herbicide and fracking fluid, okay? So I know it's going to be awful. This could very well be the final episode of The Wonderful World of Stew, if, of course, the internet is right. Oh, before I drink, let me remind you, do not attempt this. I am a trained professional in stupidity at work. The professional, me, and the company, The Blaze, take no responsibility if you attempt to drink Roundup, or fracking fluid for that matter, don't do it. Herbicide and fracking fluid are not beverages. We spent hours and hours in front of spreadsheets to make sure we calculated the proper amounts of each chemical I'm about to ingest so you know I don't die. No credible person would recommend that you do this because it's not its designed use. After much research, we're doing this to prove a point, but you should not, partially because it's going to taste horrible, which is why I need to add a bunch of artificial sweeteners. Do you have some here, Matt? Do you mind adding? By the way, I'm told these artificial sweeteners, uh, by many of the same people on the internet, are also completely deadly. Incidentally, I've built up a large tolerance to chemicals. I'm like Wesley in The Princess Bride with Iocane powder. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, uh, good luck. Thank you. The suicide. This is the first on-camera suicide, right? Well, before we start, do you have, can you get a chaser? I'm gonna need a chaser. Okay, Red Bull, thank you very much. Little Red Bull chaser. By the way, caffeine, lots of caffeine in here, also more toxic than glyphosate. And do you have uh, some, maybe some more artificial sweeteners for this drink? Make it look a little bit more toxic? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's starting to actually look good now. It looks like a melon ball. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, I have the chaser. I have the drink ready to go. Can I squeeze the wet lemon? I would suggest it. Yeah. Okay. Probably maybe that'll cut the taste a little bit. Here we go. The first on camera suicide. I don't know if I like the inch of salt at the bottom of this, but I'm gonna do my best. I mean, it's a weekend show. Why Why would anyone do this for me? Okay, are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> it's crunchy. It's not as bad as I thought. I will say that whatever you did to that was, was wonderful. I will say it was a tad herbicide-y, uh, a little crunchy. Still aside me again, Matt, <laughs> because that was absolutely delicious. And I think I'm going to live through it. So to review, <laughs> it's just sand in my teeth. Why did I think this was a good idea? To review, do not attempt to drink glyphosate, but if you accidentally do, it probably will not kill you. And you actually ingest a very small amount over your lifetime. It's not really that big of a deal. Fracking fluid is not scary either, but again, it's not a beverage. Don't drink it. But if you accidentally do, you probably won't die. And if you want to poison yourself the fun and tasty way, reach for alcohol, which by the way, is also much more toxic than glyphosate. Cheers. By the way, I've instructed the wonderful world of Stu Crew to take video of me two days after this to make sure that I'm still alive or I guess maybe not. We'll see. Here comes video of me wherever I am two days after the drink. Happy suicide. Yep. 
that's what it would have looked like if I had actually been killed. But as I told you, it's not harmful to humans, so I'm completely fine. But I am a Canadian sports celebrity, that's true. <laughs>